Constitution he, he ignores. It and wouldn't work, I submit to you, it wouldn't work if it wasn't popular. Well, now, a lot, it is, now it's a lot said, of people are distracted, having, I agree with that. Having said that, it is a lot less popular in general right now than is given credit for or is reflected in the national politicians or would-be national politicians who spoke at CPAC here. There is a huge gap. I mean, the Afghanistan war is, uh, by some polling, the least popular war in American history. Iraq war is, is kind of the back. We've seen an uptick in the last 12, 15 months of willingness to go after ISIS, but even then people are very um, uh, uneasy about it. And uh, some really interesting polling from, uh, I want to say John Zogby or maybe his brother, but uh, basically if you ask Americans, and this is consistent over time, and it's probably only more so now, uh, what country do you think that we should uh, have uh, an alliance with uh, to go to war to protect. There's only, I think, four countries that cross the 60% threshold of that. And it's England, Australia, Canada, and Israel. There might be a fifth, but I think it's basically those four. Um, which says to me that the kind of um, bipartisan status quo on this stuff uh, and Washington centrist view on this is the default is more interventionist, it's also more nation building as nation building has never been popular. So there is a gap there and there's a political opportunity for someone to look into that gap. Having said all of that, um, you wouldn't be able to engage in so many uh, uh, interventions overseas if it wasn't at least, at least somewhat popular. You have to ask yourself, okay, what's behind that? And that's a more difficult thing to pinpoint on rather than just pointing at this president you don't like or that one you don't like saying he's a war criminal. So I think you've put your finger on the root of the problem, which is uh, many people's aversion to principle. So I'd like to advance a possible way of persuading somebody that no principle is what they need, and without the principle they're dead. And to that effect, my first question is, can you evaluate effectively about anything? It's chemistry or biology or dating or tennis or whatever without any principles? I mean, that's the question. Yeah, um, you, look, I, uh, I won the math bowl for the city of Long Beach in 1982. Uh, yeah, so I took geometry younger yeah, than any student had that's in the history of, of the uh, right? Long Beach. Yeah, it's all about axioms and this kind of stuff. Principles, yes. Uh, you know what, well. <laughs> I, I appreciate your effort, but it's, it's chaotic to get people to think foundationally, to, to insist that they boil things down to first principles is a long shot effort in American public discourse and always will be because people, generally speaking, aren't like that. But um, it's in their self-interest to do so because sure. if once yeah, you yeah. realize that you cannot evaluate effectively without a principle, then you are more interested in principles. And I'm going to tell you what question is going to lead you to the realization that you cannot evaluate effectively without a principle. And that question is, what is an effing evaluation anyway? Yeah, I mean, like that. It's an application of a general rule to a specific situation. It is deductive reasoning that's going on in your mind. Every time you make a decision, you're using a principle either explicitly or implicitly. I appreciate, I, I totally appreciate your effort. Uh, and you should know you're talking to a college dropout and I, who am more copacetic to where you're coming from than most people here, if you're on sentence two of talking about evaluations and principles and this kind of stuff, I'm gonna start looking and seeing if there's any TV on with the baseball squares. Um, <laughs> Because it's just not. But you are a math champion, so we give you credit, credit I, for that. I, I, I was, I was. I, anyway, I, 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 gave, I offered I gave you the a line. Trophy up. I offered you a line of reasoning, a line of questioning, yeah. for yourself or for anybody else, and I'm doing a good fight. Thank you very for much for epistemological clarity. Do it. <laughs> Win it. You should talk to this crazy Russian too. Oh, okay. Uh, it was fun interviewing, man. Thank you very much.